When the Sahaba heard these ayat, it wasn't so much that this was a case against Bani Israel. They thought of who first? They thought, they thought of themselves. Look at, for example, a conversation that happens between Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, uh, anhu was telling Muawiyah radiallahu anhu about the ayah alladhina yaktizuna dhahab wal fiddah those who hoard gold and, gold and silver. You know, he was warning him about Muslims being obsessed with saving too much wealth. So he quoted that part of the ayah. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu says, Nazalat fi ahlil kitab ya Abu Dhar. This was revealed about the people of the book. This is not about us, this is about the Jews and the Christians. And what does Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu say? He says, Nazalat fi him. Lana. It was revealed about them, but it's a warning and a lesson for us. In other words, even when they read about Bani Israel, they're not thinking about Bani Israel, they are thinking about themselves. And this will become abundantly clear in this surah. Abundantly clear. That as we read their accounts, we are being told, look, there's a, there's a veteran nation that had guidance, that was given a book, and it was, uh, the messenger sent to them is the closest to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in many regards. Musa alayhi salam. You know, he was commanded with many a things that the messenger of Allah was commanded with sallallahu alayhi wa And there's a reason he is the most mentioned messenger in the Qur'an. Because his case study will help us do our life and, and live our life as an ummah better. We, we, we must care, carefully, carefully analyze all of the mistakes of Bani Israel, why? So we don't make those mistakes. That's the point of it. So now Allah begins, So when you're listening, Allah telling Bani Israel, remember the favor I favored you with. Now you have to think. They should remember the favor they were favored with. But don't we have to remember the favor Allah favored us with? What is the favor Allah favored us with? He made us the last ummah. He made us the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He made us Ahlul Qur'an, the people of Qur'an. He made us the people qualified for the shafa'a of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not a small favor. You make mention of the favor Allah gave you. And you know by the way, when you remember somebody's gift, you appreciate it more. If you don't remember the gift, you don't appreciate it. This, is, this has to become part of the culture of Muslims. We all know we're Muslims, we all know we're people of Qur'an. But we have to remind each other, can you appreciate that Allah gave us this book? It should be like a new gift every time we should remember this book as a gift from Allah Azza wa We should remember our messenger as a gift, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a gift given to us, a special gift from Allah Azza wa And he says, أُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِيَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَوْفُ بِعَهْدِي أُوْفِ بِعَهْدِكُمْ Now that you remember this favor, what should be the natural consequence? You fulfill, fulfill the, my promise. Fulfill my promise. And I will fulfill my promise to you. And ufi is majzum, which means it's jawab al shart. If you fulfill my promise, then as a consequence, I will fulfill my promise to you. My promise to you. What is Allah's promise to them? You know, there are two promises to them. There's a promise in dunya, and there's a promise in the akhirah. The promise in, the, in this dunya is, if they established Torah, they would have eaten from above them and from below them. This was the promise given to them. If you can follow this book, I will make your dunya into jannah. I will give you everything. You know, people run after dunya, Allah, t- Allah gave them the formula. If you just follow my guidance, you'll get dunya too. I'll give you that too. You won't even have to run after it. It'll just come to you. And then there was the reward of the akhirah. The same thing has been given to us. The, this promise has been given to us. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You know, and in that ayah, Allah mentions, لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا You know, he says he will establish the believers in the land and he will make them follow generation after generation and he will settle them after their situation of fear he will remove the position of fear from the ummah is it not the case that the ummah is in a position of fear today the, the vast majority of muslims live a life of fear and allah is giving them the way out of that fear it's it's very it's it's such an oversimplistic thing but you know and if i you and i give speeches about it it's something else if we all just heard allah's speech allah telling us come back it's a, diff- it's a different thing. This ummah has to be called back to Allah's khubba, Allah's wa'ma'ibah, Allah's advice, which is Qur'an itself. You know, ar- ar- across this world, in this month, the ummah is listening to Allah's promise, Allah's words, every night. Every- if we just reflected on one page of what we were reciting, just one page, this favor of Allah, it would be easy for us to fulfill the promise He has made with us, and then He would fulfill the promise He has made to us.